back. Hurry, Mr. Bejron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Um, now you need to understand beyond those general rules, though. This kind of basic story about how mass health works. Once you are on mass health, uh, it, once you have qualified, what happens is there is another rate that gets applied to the very same bed that is used by the very same person. So that in this example, um, which, it was, which is a, a real life example from a nursing home in Marlboro, where the private pay rate was $8,700 per month, <laughs> once the person who was on that private pay rate qualified for mass health, um, then there was an evaluation made as to what the mass health rate would be. Now, those ra that gets determined according to a chart that mass health has, and there are 10 different categories in the chart, and each category is based on how many estimated nurse minutes per day, yes, there is such a thing, estimated nurse minutes per day that have to be spent on that nursing home resident. And the more estimated nurse minutes per day, the more mass health would pay. The key thing to remember about this, though, is that no matter at, at category 10, if you are the sickest you can be, MassHealth is going to be paying for that bed $7,100. Remember, that was a bed that private pay was being paid $8,700. If that person in the nursing home is only sick but not dying, uh, and therefore needs a lot needs less care, that bed would be paying that MassHealth would pay $4,900. If, if Mary were only a person, were a person who was physically okay, but was basically there because she was wandering, right? So that so that she was she didn't need a lot of nursing care, that bed they would be paying thirty four hundred dollars or less than fifty percent of the private pay rate. So the reason why you always want to qualify for mass health always is because even if you are paying the nursing home, even if you're still paying the nursing home, or if you are required to reimburse Mass Health for having paid the nursing home, you're paying them at a much, much lower rate. So the burn rate on your money, the, the, the rate at which your money shrinks, really is significant, can be significantly lower. And I'm going to give you that example. Next slide. <clears throat> so to if you want to qualify for this D4C <laughs> pooled trust, as I mentioned, it has to be a separate nonprofit entity. The payments, and I've described that, have to be for supplemental needs. You're going to pay an application fee, which tends to be about $750 to $1,000. And there is going to be a provision that following the death of the person that's in the nursing home, uh, they will take a percentage of the remaining money. Most of them take 25%. That, they're, they're all nonprofits, so that money gets used to take care of indigent older people. Finally, then they're going to pay mass health. And finally, any remaining money can get paid to the heirs. And by the way, the heirs don't, don't necessarily need to be the people who are named in the will. They are simply the people who are named by the person who has the power attorney, of attorney or the conservator or the, or the, uh, uh, or the guardian um, on, on a list that gets accepted by the D4C. Next slide. So going back to Mary, assume she had these, the, same, the assets that we just went through, totaling $625,000. Next slide. <clears throat> to understand what she would do to deal with trying to qualify for mass health, you first need to understand this. This has been very small print. I'm going to read the red part, though. Remember I mentioned to you that if you qualify for mass health, one of the requirements is that following that qualification, you have to sell your home within nine months. Now, historically, um, there were a lot of people who wouldn't do that. Um, they would just not do it. Um, they would, and the reason is because they didn't want to because they knew that once they had sold the home of their aunt or their mother or whatever, that all the money was going to knock the aunt or the mother off of mass health. And so they wanted to kind of continue. So what they would do is you'd have this house that was worth $300,000 and it was being it, you know, managed by the nephew who had a power of attorney. And at the end of the nine months, he'd go back to mass health and say, you know, I made my best efforts to sell this house, but, you know, I listed it for $500,000 and there were no takers. Right? So people would list properties for these huge amounts and then not have a buyer, and then the property would just kind of continue. So it would go for years without these properties selling. So what MassHealth did in an attempt to close that loophole 
is they added this language into their regulation, and they said once the property is for sale, quote, an offer to buy real estate is considered reasonable, and that is, it ha- and that means that it has to be accepted. It is considered reasonable if it is at least two thirds of the fair market value, unless the individual proves otherwise to Mass Health satisfaction. So, in other words, if Mary's nephew decided to take that $300,000 house after Mary had qualified for Mass Health, which she can do and still own the house, and sell it to himself for $200,000, that's okay. Now, if he had done that the day before she qualified for Mass Health, it wouldn't have been okay. It would have been a $100,000 gift because he would have gotten a $300,000 property for only $200,000. But the day after, he, after she qualifies, the house can be sold for a third off which is, we use as oftentimes as you know, really a planning tool. Next slide. So assume that that's what happened with the house, that Mary, the house got sold for, for two-thirds of $300,000, which means $200,000. Assume that Mary took the, 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 the $150,000 in the IRA and pulled all the money out and paid tax on it, and we're assuming a fairly low tax, so assume that she got one hundred thirty-five dollars from that. Assume that she took the $100,000 annuity paid some penalty on that, and as you know from a lot of you from dealing with annuities, a lot of, typically there's a penalty provision for early withdrawal. So that she ended up with 90, and assume her bank account stayed the same. So Mary then would have $500,000 that she would need to spend out. Next slide. Well, if Mary were spending that money at the, at the private pay rate for that nursing home bed, using the numbers that we had used, um, then she would be spending down the money uh, using uh, the little green bars. And at the end of a year, she would have gone from about $500,000 to, down to about $400,000. If, on the other hand, Mary were, had qualified for Mass Health, the money were being spent by, by Mass Health at the Mass Health rate, then at the end of that year, she, instead of having spent about $100,000, she would have only spent about $50,000. Next slide. So, Using private pay at the end of one year, Mary would have ended up with $407,000 in the bank. If, if, on the other hand, she had taken all the money and put it into the D4C, she would have ended up at the end of that year with $452,000 in the bank. Now, remember, it, it, now remember, remember that, that at that point, she would have also re, it reimbursed MassHealth for any of the money that MassHealth had spent. Now, in addition to that, before the money could come back to Mary's heirs, there would have to be a 25% uh, commission paid to the D4C. So in that case, in this case, if she was only there for a year, uh, then, then at the end of that year, if Mary died, there would have been a greater cost to doing the D4C than there would have been to doing on private pay. Because at the end of the year on private pay, there would have been 407000 left. At the end of the year doing the D4C, there would only be $339,000 left. But let's see what happens if Mary lived for five years. Next slide. In that case, at the end of the five years, what would have been left in the, in the, in the bank if Mary had been on private pay would have been uh, just a little under $50,000. On the other hand, if she had put all the money in the D4C and then she had died and then the D4C had reimbursed Mass Health for what they had paid, what would have been left for the heirs would be o- a little over $250,000. Next slide. So that's the difference. On private pay, um, at the end of the day, there would have been $38,000 left in the bank. Uh, as a result of using the D4C, which w- she would have had that $262,000 minus the 25%, so the heirs would have ended up with $196,000 left in the bank. So the difference if you expect that the person is going to be in the nursing home for a long time, is really substantial. And more importantly, if you expect the person is going to be in the nursing home, suppose they have less assets. Well, I'll get to that example. So there's always a benefit as far as the ultimate amount of money that ends up being available. And remember, remember, in all cases, no matter what, no matter how long Mary lived in the nursing home, if the money is in the D4C, then in terms of providing benefits for Mary, providing supplementary met benefits for Mary, there's always money there. So, I mean, I had a, I, I had a case, and I've, I've, I've used this example of a woman uh, who was from, I think, Ashland, actually. She was a daughter, and she had been taking care of her mother. 
And she had started off with about $250,000. And when I met her, uh, they had about $60,000 left. And so she had heard about this D4C because they had done a presentation. She said, well, does that still make sense for me to do? And I said, well, sure. I said, how's your mother feeling? Is, you know, do you think your mother is going to die very soon? She said, well, no, actually, Ma's still in pretty good health. I said, well, you know, by putting the money in the D4C, what you can do, even though it's only this remaining amount of money, you can qualify your mother, and you can know that you're never going to be in this situation, which was coming up soon, because at, that, at, that, at the amount of money she had, she was going to be on private pay for about six more months. You'll, all, you'll know that your mother will always have extra money to take care of all these extra things to take care of all the little things that she might want. So she ended up doing this, and we put the money in the D4C, and we qualified her, her mother for Mass Health. Uh, and then the social worker from the D4C came out, and, was, and we were talking, uh, and was talking to this woman, and said, so, you know, what, this, the mother was about 95 years old. I said, well, what would your mother like? Is there something that we could do for your mother? Is there, a, is there a, does she watch TV? Could we get her like a really great flat screen TV with speakers? said, no, actually, my mother's blind. You know. Well, could we get her like a great CD player? You know, and so, no, my mother is <laughs> deaf. Is deaf. She, and so, so, so we're, just, we're just talking. So, well, you know, do you ever take your mother out? Well, no, she's really, really sick. You know, she really can't get out. And so the woman said, then said, well, you know, is there any special food that your mother would really like? And the woman said, oh, she said, you know, we grew up poor, um, but like once a year, we go out for lobster. My mother loved lobster. And the woman said, well, you know, as long as your mother lives, she can have lobster now anytime she wants. Anytime she wants. This is an old lady that had very little and is not in great shape, but at least in terms of that one thing that can improve her quality of life for the rest of her life, there's always going to be money available, and it's because of the D4C. But, but going back to some other examples, just so that you kind of get a sense how, of how this works. Suppose Mary had started off with $200,000. Next slide. Then, at the end of a year, if she had been on private pay, uh, what she would have had left was $107,000. At the end of just one year, if she had been, if she had put the money in the D4C, there would have been $114,000 left. So. When, for people who have smaller amounts of money, very quickly the D4C becomes more beneficial than doing anything else. Next slide. Second example, suppose Mary had only had $100,000. So she had spent down her other money or she just didn't have much in savings. She only had $100,000. Next slide. At the end of one year on private pay, Mary would have had $7,600 left. Using the D4C, she would have had $39,302 left. So that there are, there are almost immediately significant effects to using, the, to using the D4C. Next slide. So that's everything about D4Cs. Um, the, the key to any kind of planning that you're going to do regarding this issue is that. You, uh, the goal of all planning is to sleep well at night. It may be that this makes no sense for a person who is heading for a nursing home. But for some people, and I, think, and I would say for a lot of people it does make sense, and the main things to take away from this are it, the main thing to take away from this is you can always qualify for mass health. You want to figure out whether it's to your advantage to qualify for mass health, but you can always qualify. Thank you very much.